when you were uh, learning about chain rule back in Calc 1, it, it started getting a little dicey when, when you incorporated trig. Yeah, and the same thing happens when you're dealing with, um, with U substitution. Because really, U substitution comes from the concept of chain rule in reverse. It's just, it's not as, um, not as cut and dried as that. Right? But you, you have an inner function. They're composite functions. You have an inner function. You're taking the derivative of that inner function, but that's where the similarities kind of end. It's what you do after that that kind of distinguishes one approach from the other. Uh, but the good thing about U substitution is that really, again, if you know it's U substitution, if you know it's that kind of question, it's just a matter of time. The problem when you're dealing with trig is that there's a, a bunch of different ways that it could take shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of wrong possibilities and how they play out, and then I'll show you the correct one. All right. So here's a wrong one. Let's say I thought my two possibilities were cosine squared and sine. All right, cosine squared x and sine of x. And so I, I looked at it and I said, you know what? Cosine squared x sounds good. I'm going to go for that one. I'm going to let that be my u. All right. So again, this is an incorrect approach, but I want to show you what happens. And then also how you can kind of develop a, a little recipe for success. All right. When I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get du is equal to its chain rule. Co the trig functions are kind of weird when it comes to that because cosine of x or cosine squared of x is the same as cosine of x as a quantity squared. So when I take the derivative of this, this is the same as 2 times cosine x times negative sine of x. Now, if I'm looking at my original integrand, cosine squared x sine of x, the, really the whole idea behind it, behind u substitution, is for us to take one factor, call it u, and use that factor's derivative to help us cancel out the other factor. So you look at what we have here in my du, I forgot the dx. Not that it's going to end up mattering, but that, that's overkill. All right, so what would happen here is, I'll, I'll just show you real quick. I would have an integral that would have a u instead of the cosine. Now, for the sine, it's like, what, what do I do? Well, this part of it is, is good. This is what I needed. I needed a sine of x dx. I have that. But I have all this extra stuff here, the negative 2 cosine x. All right, so what I would have to do here, and this is where it all falls apart, is I would have to divide both sides by negative 2 cosine of x. So I'd be looking at du over negative 2 cosine x is equal to sine x dx. All right, well, what that means is that, yeah, I can replace the sine of x dx, but I'd be replacing it with all of this, du over negative 2 cosine x. All right, the situation has not improved. In fact, it got a lot worse. All right, now, you could actually kind of manipulate your way towards the correct expression from this, but you, you didn't go about it the right way, all right? Because you could actually figure out what you would have to be in order to cancel out the cosine of x, but if you've already made this more more difficult than it needs to be. So we selected an incorrect u. All right, so that's not the best way to go. All right, but you know, first time through, you look at that and you say, well, how was I supposed to know? Failure, the greatest teacher is. I think that's the right way to say it. So, I'll try the sine of x, also an incorrect possibility. So, u equals sine of x. So, then I get du equals cosine of x dx. This one I'll just talk you through. 
the u would replace the sine of x, so I'd be left with a cosine squared dx. But I don't have enough here to get rid of cosine squared dx. I only have enough to get rid of a cosine of x dx. Right? I'm still going to have a cosine x left over. Right? So if you were to go through this process using this u, you'd still have an x and a u within your integral. All right, so game over for that one. And so some people actually look at this and say, well, I've tried everything. Well, you didn't because the one thing you didn't try was letting u equal just the cosine of x. All right, so what we could do is we can think of, and we kind of alluded this, to this before, the integral as cosine of x squared times the sine of x dx. All right. Sometimes you just want to let your u be equal to the thing that's being raised to a power. I know that doesn't sound very mathy. The thing being raised to the power, the base of an exponential, the base of a power function. But sometimes whatever is being raised to a power, let that be your u. Sometimes that's the way to go. All right. Sometimes it's whatever's contained within a trig function or a log function or an exponential function. All right. But you don't know unless you try it. All right. So in this case, du would be equal to negative sine x dx. Well, I don't need to get rid of a negative sine x dx. I need a positive sine x dx. So let me negate my equation. Negative du is equal to the positive sine x dx. All right. Just because it's differential doesn't mean it's not an equation. And you can multiply both sides of an equation by whatever you want, divide by whatever you want, as long as it's not zero. You know, raise it to both sides to whatever power you want. These are all operations that you can do. Put into a trig sub, please. Uh, trig sub, no, because trig sub is when you're replacing an algebraic expression with a trigonometric one. But you could do an identity substitution. The thing is that that doesn't really, I don't, oh, let me just think off the top of my head. One minus. Yeah, you get one, when you simplify, it would be sine x minus sine squared x, uh, sine cubed x. It's, you, you get, you go right in a circle for that. All right, so at this point, we can do a clean substitution we can replace the sine of x dx with a negative du. And so my new integral is going to be, instead of cosine squared, it's going to be u squared times, instead of sine x dx, multiplied by negative du, or clean it up, negative u squared du, integrate that, Increase the exponent by one, divide by the new exponent. Negative one third u cubed plus c, with u being equal to cosine of x. I wrote that like really huge and then I was stuck for space at the end so I had to write it really tiny. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, so four, five, and six are kind of along the same lines as at least something that we've covered. So those become problems that you could try on your own. But really, the, the, I'll just try to get this large enough so you can still see it if you're copying. <laughs> but really, sometimes it's this that needs to happen in order for you to come up with the, uh, the appropriate you. And you know, I, I'll tell you, I've been in the, same, in the same boat where I've sat there staring at a problem, trying to run through it in my mind, and be like, all right, well, that you, no, that didn't work. All right, let me try that you, that didn't work. That you didn't work. Okay, crap, it's not you substitution. Let me try something else. And in my mind, I'm just trying to play through all the different possibilities. Meanwhile, one of the U's that I had ran through in my mind would have worked perfectly well 
if I did it correctly, right? Sometimes writing it down on paper is what needs to happen in order for you to actually see what you need to see, right? And, and it's annoying because like the whole paralysis by analysis thing, you're sitting there, you're taking a test, you don't want to start writing down something unless you have a, you, you know, you're going down the right path. You don't want to find out five, 10 minutes into a solution that you went the wrong way, but sometimes you have to go down a path in order to see whether it's the right path or not. Right. So, I, I mean, when it comes to techniques of integration, that's the biggest piece of advice that I can give you, is, is don't be afraid to actually write a solution, whether it's the wrong one or the right one. Doesn't even matter. Just start writing something and see where it takes you. Scrap paper is a good thing. No, you do cosine of x, close the parentheses, and then square it. The calculator, it's weird. I don't understand why they do this, but cosine squared x, the way we write it, on the TI, whether it's the newer ones or the older ones, it's understood as cosine x squared. That's how you write it if you want to put it in the calculator. It's, it's the weirdest thing. I don't, I don't know. Right, you, you kind of want to write it, I mean, I wrote it here as cosine x in parentheses squared, but since cosine builds, or you know, the trig functions, they build the parentheses in, you'll find yourself writing it this way every time and it's kind of annoying. I mean, if you're, if you're really paranoid, do it this way. Parentheses for the x, parentheses for the function, and then squared, but this gets the same job done. Can you just do like cosine x? You could, yeah, if you wanted to, yeah. Sometimes the expressions can get a little out of hand, but you know, you can pick and choose your battles there. All right, so it's gonna be the same case in all situations where you know when you're dealing with u substitution, identifying the u. Once you identify the u, then it's a matter of pro, uh, process. Right, so if you identify a U as, you know, you could look at the most complicated part of the expression, right? You could look at, we, we want something that differentiates to be a constant multiple away from another part, another factor of the expression. In either event, the thing that makes this expression the most complicated or makes it complicated in any capacity would be the one plus X to the fourth. So I'll try letting that be my u. So u equals 1 plus x to the fourth. And I'm going to differentiate that. All right, so I'll take the derivative. du is equal to 4x cubed dx. That was that little shortcut where I said, instead of writing du dx, just to multiply both sides by dx, why not just put the dx on the right to begin with? So put it in differential form. All right. So I'm looking at what I have here and what I need for my integral. I don't see a four in the integral, All right? So let's get rid of that four. So I'm gonna divide it from both sides. So one fourth du is equal to x cubed dx. That allows for a clean substitution. Tells me that I can replace my x cubed with a one fourth du. All right, so I'll do that. So I'm going to have a one-fourth du up top. And we can move some things around as needed. On the bottom, it's going to be u to the second power. All right, u to the second power. The idea being that my new integral contains only u's, no x's. All right, if there was an x in there, I would start looking for a different u. And say, okay, well, u equals one plus x to the fourth didn't cut it. So let me try something else. All right. So rewrite one fourth u to the negative second du. Increase the exponent by one, becomes u to the negative first. Divide by the new exponent, negative one fourth plus c. And then just bring back the original u, which is one plus x to the fourth, and you have it.
All right. Not overly concerned with the appearance of your final answer in that, you know, whatever form it takes is not really important to me as long as it's equivalent to the correct antiderivative. All right. So if you were to write this as one negative one over four times the quantity one plus x to the fourth, that's the same thing. All right. Or negative one over four plus four x to the fourth, same thing. Right? It, it doesn't really matter. As long as what you get is strictly containing x's and is equivalent to the correct final answer. Which is problematic for me because it means that I have to allow for any possible variation when I'm grading. So that means that my answer key might have right, this or that or that or that or that and I have to figure them all out. Right, but that's my problem, not yours. All right, so just put something that you know is equivalent to the correct final answer. Check it in the calculator if you want, and then move on. All right, so speaking of moving on, number five. Well, numbers five and six. Well, six being the, the juicier one. Five's not too bad. All right, six is kind of like, I, I don't know, it's sort of... Um, I don't want to say it's a misplaced problem, but it kind of is because it, it relies on the strategy that I told you about last class for finding the antiderivative of secant. And, and so, like, if you didn't tackle that problem later on in the, in the packet, then you might not be able to handle this one. So maybe, maybe it is misplaced. I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll talk typos later on. So I'm looking at this. I know it's a use substitution problem because it's in the use substitution section. Ah, my only real option here is x squared minus 8x plus 1. Because if I, if I let u equal x minus 4, that's going to give me a du dx of 1. That's not going to help. All right? if, I, if I let it be equal to the whole radical, that's going to be a nightmare. That's, that, that might cancel some things out, but it's going to introduce a mess too. All right, so we'll try this and see where it goes. du equals 2x minus 8 dx. Well, that's nice because I'm looking at the numerator here of x minus 4 dx, and I look at what I just came up with, 2x minus 8 dx. That's exactly double x minus 4 dx. So let me, let me divide out. Divide by 2. So 1 half, uh, let me keep that purple actually. 1 half du would be equal to, so I'm dividing, let me not be too free and easy with this. Let me actually make it look somewhat mathematical. You're going to divide by 2, so you're going to get x minus 4 dx. I'll put it in parentheses just so it looks a little nicer. All right. But that's what the numerator would be equivalent to, the, the 1 half du. I could swap out the x minus 4 dx for a 1 half du. So integral 1 half du over the square root of just u. Because right? this whole thing right here, this x squared minus 8x plus 1, we define that as u, so that's just the u. All right, I have an expression that's strictly in terms of u. I'm on the right track. So, I want to clean it up. 1 half u to the negative 1 half du. Increase the exponent by 1. It becomes u to the 1 half. Divide by the new exponent, it's going to cancel out. So you're getting x, I'm sorry, u to the 1 half plus c. So I just got to pop my u back in. x squared minus 8x plus 1 to the 1 half plus c. And that's all she wrote. All right. So it really comes down to your ability to identify the correct u. You get the right U, you're off to the races. If not, false start. 
go back to the starting blocks, pick a different U, and go and start the race again. Did you put the, the U under a radical, like the final answer under a radical? You could. You could. That's perfectly fine. Just leave the C out of it. Okay. All right. For number six, we have secant of 2x. So the U in this case, well, we really only have one choice. The U has to be the 2x. So du would be equal to 2dx, which doesn't really seem to further the plot too much. I mean, I could, I can clean it up a little bit, make it one half du equals dx. I mean, there's no two in the integral aside from the two x that's getting swapped out by the u. So, I mean, that's that's really the only substitution that we can make. So, I can come up with a new integral of secant u. Uh, let me put my parentheses as black. But then the dx gets replaced with a one-half du. All right, but I'm still at the point where I have to find the antiderivative of secant u. All right. And so, like I said, this goes to what I was talking about. I think it's two pages up, maybe three pages up. How do you find the antiderivative of secant u? Well, after today, you can chalk it up to just being a rule. And in fact, you know what, that's what I'm going to do in this case. I'm going to let it be the rule for this problem. And then when we tackle that other problem, which we actually already got started with, you'll see where that rule comes from, right? But generally, when you're finding the derivative or antiderivative of your six trig functions, it can just be a rule. You don't have to figure it out, right? So the rule for now, I'll prove it to you later is that the antiderivative of secant u du is equal to the natural log of secant u plus tangent u plus c. Only because, and the only reason I'm cutting the corner on this problem is because we'd have to do another u substitution, and since I already used u, I'd have to define a new variable. So u substitution followed by a v substitution, it's, it's a little too early for that, right? So that's the antiderivative of secant u, right? So we're looking at an antiderivative that would be one half the natural log of secant u plus tangent u plus c, and since we know u is equal to 2x, this becomes 1 half ln secant of 2x plus tangent of 2x plus c. All right, so plenty more practice problems in the next video. Like, like I said, I mean, I'll put a star on all of these. This is such an important topic to build your foundation for everything that follows that it's, it's worth spending the extra time on it. So even if you have experience with use substitution, uh, you probably, I mean, you might feel like you have a lot. You might feel like you're, you're good to go. Uh, you, it could never hurt to have a little bit more experience. Right? More problems you see, the easier it becomes. Anyway, so that's the solution to number seven. Really nothing too crazy when you see it, you know, acted out, the issue becomes, you know, for a lot of folks anyway, yeah, it's all well and good when you do it. it makes perfect sense. But when I go to do it, that, you know, it's a, it's a complete crapshoot. Or I never would have thought to do it that way. That's why I ask you to look at these problems before I go over them in class. You know, struggle through them, try them on your own. This way, this isn't the first time you're seeing it. Because if you're seeing this for the first time, Without having tried it on your own, this could be somewhat shocking. Same thing with number eight. I mean, you knew that, though. It's got an asterisk. It's got to be extra, extra juicy. All right. Um, there's actually a pretty... Um, 
oh, I don't know the right word. Intricate, maybe, process associated with this. But I'm gonna show you kind of a avenue around that. So you look at this and you say, all right, and I'll show you the wrong you. I did this last time too. I'll show you the wrong you first, and then I'll show you how you can come up with the right you. So let's let you, you know, it's like the other problems, let u equal 16 minus x to the sixth. All right, well, cool. Seems very, very helpful. du equals negative 6x to the fifth dx. That is a, um, a yikes moment, I believe. All right, because what we're dealing with there is the idea that, well, if I go ahead and use that, yeah, it's going to cancel out the x squared, but then it's going to introduce an x cubed. All right, so, you know, it's out of the frying pan into the fire. All right, I would have gotten rid of this, but I would not have successfully been able to get rid of the, um, the x's. All right, so without going too far into it, we would we would conclude pretty much immediately well something's wrong here either this isn't the right type of question or we did something wrong now you're not going to select x squared and you're not going to select the entire radical because that's going to make a mess out of things there's a clever little approach that you can use it's very subtle but it's the kind of thing that you if you know once you see it you realize that it's an option that was always there you just never really considered it all right, so what I would say is, well, I, I, what, what do I need? I need a U that has a power of three, right? So I'm looking at this, and it, this is the thing that I want to cancel. I need a U that has X raised to a power of three, because when I take it, the, the derivative of an expression that's raised to a power of three, it becomes a power of two, which would allow me to cancel that. All right, so let me rewrite my integral. I'm going to write it as x cubed squared. That's the same thing as x to the sixth, right? Power to a power, multiply the exponents, you get the same thing. It's the same exact expression, but now it allows me to let u equal x cubed. All right, so then du would be equal to 3x squared dx. It's wonderful. I'm just off by a 3, so let me divide both sides by 3. Can do a little substitution here. Start cleaning things up. This can replace this. So we're looking at a new integral with a one-third du on top and the square root of 16 minus u squared on the bottom. All right, so I can clean this up a little bit. I'll write it as one-third, the antiderivative of one over the square root of 16 minus u squared du. All right, so at this point, you may have hit a complete brick wall and stopped, and that's understandable because this is a rule that we really haven't talked about yet, but it's, it's there, it's in the packet, it's in the formula sheet, but it goes back to what I was saying before, formulas are great. If you don't know enough to look for a formula, then it's all over, and so this is kind of like my case in point for that. Facts mean that you don't have to show the work necessarily. Uh, moments. That would be this moment, I suppose. Um, yeah, yeah, there we go. I don't know. Sometimes I think just, you know, like I, I try to be fancy and stuff. And D 
do things like that and I end up taking more time than I would have if I had just written it out and just told you it was on the previous page or whatever. Uh, so anyway, this is the rule. That can be applied here. But like I said, I'll show you where this rule came from later on. All right. So you just gotta apply the appropriate substitutions because you just gotta think about, okay, well, what would my U be and what would my A be? Well, U is U, because you see it's following the same form. We have DU, one times DU is DU, so the top is fine. The bottom, it's 16 instead of A squared, so what's A gonna be? Four, all right, so my antiderivative here is gonna be one third, constant multiple, you leave that alone, multiplied by arc sine of u over four plus c. So one third arc sine of x cubed over four plus c. Okay, so, and again, you're only getting that based on the fact that this is a 16, the rule says it should be a squared. In order for a squared to become 16, a had to be equal to four. So, you're just kind of piecing it together. Just like, compare this with this, what's different? These are different. If only they were the same. Well, if a is four, they would be the same. All right. Because I'm going to show you how to discover them later on. Yeah, it's going to be magical. Did you have a made the denominator uh, to the exponent of one, of one over two? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It would still end up being the same approach, though, because that's 16 minus u squared. It's something you can't get rid of it without. Four minus x squared. Four minus x to the third. Yeah, because the way, like with the radicals, the only way it would work is if that were a perfect square. So, like the square root of this, like you, you don't take the square root piece at a time. You want to do like six raised to one over two? Nah. Nah. If they were connected with multiplication, then yeah. But addition, subtraction just makes life more complicated. One thing I'll take is a typo. I mean, it's not really, it's not really a typo. Number nine really shouldn't be number nine. It's like the easiest one on the whole thing. No offense if you got it wrong. U is equal to x cubed plus one. Du is equal to three x squared dx. I need the x squared dx to go away, so multiply both sides by one third. Substitute. This goes in for x squared dx. So it's one third du over u, which when you clean it up becomes one third the integral of one over u du. What's the antiderivative of one over u? Oh, exact mundo. Ln absolute value of u plus c. Bring your u back in. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, we we'll take this one and many more like it. But then there's number ten. Ah, it's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Just follow the idea that when you're using U substitution, you want to go for the, uh, the greasiest part of the integral and let that be your U. But it, really, just think about it. Like, if this wasn't there, I, I could find the antiderivative of this part. These are just constants. They're, they're irrelevant. 
And in fact, this, this looks like it's just there to make things look more confusing because I could easily just put all this together and make it more simple. But this, this is an e. e, e to a power, that's easy, right? It's this guy over here that's making things more complicated, so let's let that be the u. So one plus e to the negative four fifths x. All right, let's see where that goes. du would be equal to, well, derivative of one is zero, so that's irrelevant. So it would be e to the negative four fifths x multiplied by the derivative of the exponent, which would be negative four fifths dx. All right. Chain rule? Yeah, chain rule, exactly. You could. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You could do that too. By doing the derivative process, though, we get a complete cancellation of this because that's exactly the same as this. So one of the beefier parts of this expression is now completely gone. And this is my u, so really the whole numerator there was a negative one that's just going to stick around. The du is going to replace everything else in the numerator along with the dx. The denominator, instead of being all of that to the second power, it's just going to be u to the second power. So then it's just housekeeping. I'm going to rewrite negative u to the negative second du. Increase the exponent by 1, u to the negative first. Divide by the new exponent, well, <coughs> negative 1 divided by negative 1 cancels. So it's just this. With the u being equal to the 1 plus e to the negative 4 over 5x. All right, it's just a very intimidating looking question, but I mean, compared to some of the other problems that we did on this page, like stepwise, you know, it's not as easy as number nine, but it's not as difficult as some of the other ones. All right, it's fairly quick. Uh, what page was this? 35.